We are called to serve humanity and out with the art and science of caring. We are built on integrity and discipline that transcends through every generation. Immaculate and amicable, we are the source of hope to alien ones and the foundation for building a healthy world. Together we shall stand. No seas of grace, no seas of caring, and the epitome of humility and service. We are specially ordained for this vocation. Yes, I'm proud to be in us. From near and far, we have gathered with one goal to uphold the good name of our profession. S for selfless service, I innovative and initiative, and for nobility, G for gentleness and love, no seas of grace, no seas of caring, and the epitome of humility and service. We are specially ordained for this vocation. Yes, I'm proud to be an us. Before we pray, we shall read from Psalm 103, from the second to the fifth verse. Psalm 103, from the second to the fifth verse. Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion, who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. May this be our experience in Jesus' name. May we bow our heads as we pray. Our Father in heaven, we are gathered here to celebrate our nurses. At the same time, to affirm the years of studies they have gone through, the clinical experiences they have gone through. Oh, Father in heaven, we are here to rejoice with them as they go through this induction program of today. We call upon you those who are within the hall here, very few representative, a symbol of the larger group that is watching and participating online. We call upon you, O oh Father in heaven, that the experience of today will mark a very important step in their lives so that as they go out to serve humanity, to be a blessing to humanity, your grace, your favor, your know-how, the skills they require, you will provide for them in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you for the sacrifices of their parents who ensured that they came to school, remained in school, and achieved their life's dreams and objectives. Oh, Father in heaven, their service to humanity will bring succor to a suffering world. Bless them with all the resources they need, all the knowledge they need, all the patience they need, and above all, all the insight they need to meet the needs of those they will serve and minister unto. We rejoice with them, Lord. We know the angels in heaven are also rejoicing. May they go out to be agents of healing because you, our God, are our great healer. In Jesus' name we pray.
Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir. Professor. The Senior Vice President, Professor Yanchiko Koro. The Registrar, North American Council of Nigeria, Abubakar Farouk, ably represented by Stella Doris, Goddess. All professors here by present, all faculty members, distinguished uh, parents who have worked so far and so hard to bring the student to this level. And our esteemed inductees, ladies and gentlemen. It is my pleasure to welcome you to this unique induction ceremony. It is unique in many ways because of the COVID-19, of which we are familiar with our circumstances. Uh, we are happy because the Bible says in all things, give glory to God. Because that is the will of God for you. And consistent with this biblical injunction, the university administration went on faithfully, determinedly to have this induction ceremony. Because the parents are asking for it, and it will have been too much waiting until next year when we don't know in the evening time. So we thank the university for this opportunity. And much more so, we thank the North American Council of Nigeria, particularly. I would like to break the protocol here and thank the registrar, Alaji Abubakar, for allowing this to happen without giving us any trouble. It is my wish that the program will go smoothly and God will bless you and bless every other of the program. You are welcome. Thank you very much. The Honorable Registrar, the Nursing and Midwifery Council of Nigeria, Alaji Farouk Umar Abubakar, ably represented. The Deputy Vice Chancellor of Academics, Professor Ian Yuchuku Okoro, other principal officers of Babcock University, our guest speaker of today, Professor Malola Inrioye of the Department of Nursing of Bafemi Awolowo University, the Dean School of Nursing, HOD of the School of Nursing, and all other HODs here present, faculty and staff of the School of Nursing, our inductees of today, our distinguished parents, gentlemen of the press, ladies and gentlemen. I feel delighted this morning to heartily welcome all of the inductees of today, faculty staff, families and friends, our honored guests to this auspicious occasion. Welcome to the 13th induction ceremony of Babcock University School of Nursing. This induction is very unique because out of the 13 years we've been inducting our students, this will be the first time we'll be doing it virtually, occasioned by COVID-19 pandemic. Ladies and gentlemen, graduating from Babcock University School of Nursing is a momentous event, and the opportunity to, to address you on this type of occasion is an honor. I'd like you to know that graduation and induction is not the end, but the beginning. I appreciate all the people, such as the faculty, staff, friends, and relatives, who played key roles in supporting and assisting you throughout your school years. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, this class has recorded some great achievements, and I here acknowledge the faculty, staff, and students involved in those achievements, and those to whom the extra mile in their studies and internship. I acknowledge the team effort of the class as a whole as a favorable light to those coming behind. As you look back at all of the steps you took together and where you stand now, it's clear 
that you have learned to take care of your patients by first learning to take care of one another. You are an amazing class, truly one of a kind. Today, you look forward to a great future with confidence and conviction in your ability to deliver a service that should mark you out as the caring, mentoring, and nurturing people that you are trained to be in Babcock. For everything you do, remember there is a reward, both from God and from man. For every good thing and for every bad thing, for every outstanding service to humanity, you will definitely receive stripes of honor. And for every dishonorable deed, you will receive medals of this honor. But you have been trained in Babcock with honor and integrity for honorable deeds. They are inductees. As you go into the community for service, I want you to know that everyone on earth is your patient. Secondly, you have the responsibility to guide decisions makers to be more ethical. You hold the society an obligation to turn your knowledge into advocacy to change the world. You have to assist the world to reset the moral compass and to guide decision makers to act righteously in the pursuit of global health. According to Sandy Somers, founder and executive director of The Truth About Nursing, no fewer than 3,500,000 children die every year from diarrhea and malnutrition circle. As nurses, your role is to ensure that this figure is cut down drastically. As nurses, you should aim at protecting lactating mothers and their babies from untoward interest. You must push government to, to more heavily invest and strengthen the global health infrastructure. There are ladies and gentlemen, quite often it is said that nurses are overworked, undervalued and underpaid, but there is nothing more satisfying than nurturing and encouraging each other to, be, to do their best and perform well in the workplace. It is also encouraging to know that whether overworked or underpaid to some settings, nurses are also held in high esteem in this society. Just saying this one is a nurse can feel extremely gratifying in almost any social institution situation. Nurses can count themselves as members of a profession that holds compassion, caring, healing as three of its central ideals. Many times you realize that you are a nurse when you those who know you or everyone you know begin to seek for you to help them alleviate their aches and pains. Almost every now and then, you also may find yourself washing your hands in public restrooms and turning off the faucet with your elbows. In conclusion, dear inductees, as you journey on in life, I wish you well in this adventure and caregiving and hope inspiring. I urge you to love selflessly not expecting anything, anything in return. Greater love had no man than this that anyone laid down his life for his friends. Thank you for listening. The induction lecturer that we have for today for this unique occasion is none any other than uh, Professor Omolola Ereoye, trained at Ibadan, trained at Ife and uh, uh, outside the country. She became a professor some years ago. Very erudite, very knowledgeable, and competent. Ereoye is a uh, a loving person, one time secretary of the Teachers Association of Nigeria nursing uh, group. So this morning we are lucky to have him present 
the induction lecture titled, you know, COVID-19, the role of the nurse in preventing COVID-19. So please, I would like us to wait attentively why Mrs. Inouye gives the lecture. Thank you very much. present, non-academic staff, the Nursing and Midwifery Council of Nigeria's regist the Registrar of the Nursing and Midwifery Council of Nigeria, and other council officials present, the inductees of today, and the proud parents and spouses and friends of inductees. My name is Omolola Irewi. I'm from Obafemi Aulawa University, and I'm a professor of nursing. I've been invited to give the uh, induction charge to the inductees for 2020. And because of the trend and what we're all working to resolve correctly, the challenge of COVID-19, I've been asked to speak on surviving the COVID-19 pandemic what should be the rules of the nurse. And I'm going to be speaking specifically to the inductees as they're starting their practice as novice, and we expect them to move over time to become experts. Infectious diseases have always been a global challenge. And before the death of Christ, and after the death of Christ, we have records. We have 10 cases, 10 occasions when the world have had to battle pandemic between 1918 and 1976. Before COVID-19, we were still trying to resolve the challenges associated with HIV infection. There are lessons that we learned to help us survive the threat associated with pandemics. Mass death, threats to life, and threat to human extinctions, threats to life and, and possibility of human extinctions are always sources of fear. And the nature of the new emerging world with COVID-19 as it evolves, have, uh, uh, the nature had created more challenges for us because till date we keep learning about this virus and the more we learn the more we have to relearn on learn learn new things as we move forward we are going to be looking at the antecedents of covid-19 briefly looking at covid-19 the challenges of COVID-19, and then surviving COVID-19 before we look at the role of the nurse. And one primary concern in situations like this has always been survivor when we have pandemics. However, the conception of survivor, more often than not, uh, may wrongly be taken as avoiding death at the period of the pandemic. But this should not be. Because 
surviving uh, should get us to think of how do we continue to exist beyond the pandemic? How are we going to be able to keep living our life? How are we going to be able to stay away and running away from whatever the sources of the pandemics are? And how are we going to be able to engage in the new world that always have to come after every pandemic? And for the purpose of this presentation, we should be looking at, looking at surviving COVID-19 as a lifetime goal. And looking at it as a lifetime goal implies that we must have value clarifications, we may need lifestyle changes, we obviously will need policy change by government, we will need institutional reorientation, we will need health professionals reorientation and awesome social changes. This also must be in the context of health and health promotion, healthy lifestyles, infection control that must get entrenched into organizational normative practices. Every institution, every organization must think infection control now as to say that our structures, our systems, our methods should be such that at every point in time we are prepared to prevent infection. This should be the norm. And come to think of it, the, uh, the usual saying about health is wealth has been taken for granted for a very long time by individuals, by groups, by organizations, and by government, especially the Nigerian government. But I think with the emergence of COVID-19 and the rapid rate of economic collapse, all of us will now have to start rethinking surviving COVID-19. Before COVID-19, we've had series of pandemics. The Antony Plague of 165 AD, that cost about 5 million deaths, and the cost was unknown. The plague of Justina, that cost about 25 million deaths, the cost was said to be bubonic, and it goes on like that. The Black Death, the third cholera pandemic, the full pandemic of 1889 to 1890, the sixth cholera pandemic of 1910 to 1911, the flu pandemic of 1918, Asian flu of 1956 and 1958, the flu pandemic of 1968, HIV AIDS pandemic that actually started in 1976 by peaks between 2005 and 2016 with a death toll of about 36 million. And now COVID-19 that started December 2019. I, I am inclined now to quote the number of deaths because we still have a long way to go. And every second, the statistics do change. What do we know about coronavirus? I'm not going to take a lot of time on this because this seems to be what we have going on. But I think briefly, uh, we, we need to be reminded that COVID-19 is an infectious disease caused by a virus, a type, a new type of coronavirus detected in China in late 2019. Uh, it affects the re respiratory system drastically, and obviously we know that whatever affects the respiratory system will cost life because the respiratory system allows oxygen uh, to be taken in and carbon dioxide to be given out. And any time there's a foreign body in the, in, the, in the system, the body has a way of reacting. Every second we get to hear about what are the common symptoms, fever, fatigue, dry cough, aches and pains, running nose, sore throat, shortness of bread, diarrhea. These I'm not going to spend a lot of time on. How do we respond? Or before we even start looking at stakeholding, 
we need to know that COVID-19 is a serious challenge. And the physical impact, the mental impact, the psychosocial impact are such that the body of the disease calls for everybody's attention in terms of what needs to be done. So let's look at what needs to be done. Survive, surviving COVID-19 have action points for virtually everybody. And stakeholding actually covers everybody. And there are specific responsibilities and obligations that start with every individual. The need for self-care. Self-care with regards to health, health promoting behavior, diseases pre prevention, action to manage ill health, and it extends to the family as individuals also live and manage illnesses in family context. And human behaviors, when we're talking about health promotion, disease prevention, are also learned and sustained within the family. When individuals fall ill, families have responsibility to take care of them. One critical challenge with COVID-19 is the fact that it takes just one person to get infected, to transmit the infection to everybody in the family, which makes stake, family stakeholding a major issue when we're talking about surviving COVID-19. And because whatever affects a family essentially will get transmitted to the community level, what we're seeing is if nothing is done one person taking COVID family into a family can actually be the beginning of extinction of a community if nothing is done about it. And this, by extension, implies that every institution where human engagement takes place also have stakes in working for helping, for helping us to survive COVID-19. Government essentially have major roles to play. And what this is, is inferring is that we all have to start imagining the roles that we must play and we must begin to model what we should do because COVID-19 is not just a health problem. It has become a social phenomenon that we all must take care of. Now, if we're talking about stakeholding, what do we expect the stakeholders to do? What should we be doing? Let's look at what we should be doing. At the individual level, at the family level, at the institutional level, we must be talking about actions for self-care, personally actions for health promotion and health care we must begin to take actions for preventive behaviors. And we, we, now that, that seems to be what everybody is talking about. Cover your nose with face mask, do hand washing frequently, uh, engage in social distancing, eat well to boost your immunity, avoid crowds. Those are preventive behaviors. But there are, we have more preventive behaviors that will have helped us to even limit the transmission of COVID-19 and the transmission, transmission of any infectious disease. And this takes us to talking about actions at the family level. Lifestyle, behavioral, lifestyle changes, behavioral changes, personal hygiene, nutrition, housing, water, sanitation, exercise, family and home care to maintain health, to manage illness, all these are things we learn at the family level. So the family becomes critical when we're talking about limiting infections. If we get to the community level, actions at the community level also get, actions at the family level also get extended to the community level. At the institutional level, obviously we know that the core values, the policies, the guidelines, the priorities, of organizations determine 
the lifestyles of workers. And except institutions actually take on board uh, healthy lifestyle as priority and put such things as part of the structure, the programs and services, no matter what individuals bring from the family, it may become a challenge when the institutions are less uh, lifestyle friendly. One of the consequences of COVID-19 have been these limitations of work and the challenges of staying off work, which is costing a lot of economic uh, deprivation for everybody, for workers, for employers of labor, and which implies that it has become important for institutions, organizations to take many of these things as priority. At the government levels, local, state, national, the core values, the policies, the guidelines, Focus of programs and services, protocol for quality assurance and quality improvement must change. And commitment to health and health care must improve. Population focused programs, because now we know that containing infectious diseases imply that we pay attention to population focused programs and services. Generally, priorities for health and models of healthcare must change. And beyond rhetoric, the idea of institutionalizing primary healthcare must change. And primary prevention must be focusing on act active lifestyle changes, health literacy, for enhanced self-care to advance personal, family, family, community, institutional, and uh, other activities that will drive Health promoting behavior uh, such that we will all be prepared for any challenge for the future. Now, how, how do this take us to talking about the roles of the nurse? I've taken my time to speak to what do we need to do at various levels. Essentially, a, prof a professional nurse and a Bachelor of Nursing Science graduates have obligations and responsibilities to provide care as a polyvalent nurse at the primary, at the secondary, at the tertiary level. And doing this in fact that when we're talking about health promotion, we're talking about disease prevention, the Bachelor of Nursing graduate is a professional and an and expert that must be able to function at these three levels of stakeholding, providing care, and also managing care. As a professional nurse, I'm going to be focusing on four main roles that the nurse must play, and I want the inductees to pay attention. As a professional nurse, and as a graduate of the Bachelor of Nursing Science degree, you are expected to be an expert at your level. An expert but a novice at the point of practice, now that you are just going into practice. Essentially, as a professional, as an expert, we expect you to be a lifelong learner. And by the time I start giving information about how you play your roles, you will see the essence of being a lifelong learner. And being a lifelong learner does not mean that you are just reading from the books, you are just going, from the in, going, to, going to the internet. It means that you are learning in every situation. You are learning from patients. You are learning from colleagues. You are learning from friends. You are learning from everybody to enhance your practice. Uh, in the context of COVID-19, you will realize that information that we have changes every second. And information about the nature of the virus, about the manifestations, about the management, this information keeps changing every second. So that actually justifies the fact that you must be a lifelong learner. Essentially, as an expert, you must be engaging in reflective practice. The reflective approach gets you to a high 
level of engaging in three types of reflections. Three types of reflection that covers the tech that covers technical reflection, practical re reflection, emancipatory reflections. And I'm going to just discuss this generally, but this applies to all aspects of your all aspect of your practice, the day-to-day -day activities that you engage in. The technical component of your reflection and based on the knowledge that you have acquired requires you to ut utilize scientific approach in decision making in the day-to-day -day care of clients. The practical reflection uh, dimension deals with the human relationship and the ex expressive nature of nursing, where you are expected to learn how to analyze, how to interpret, how to explain human interactions for you to get the maximum benefit as to get your clients, their families and your colleagues to get the best out of your daily interaction. And this is one important dimension of nursing that we keep working it's 11 o'clock in Nigeria. Emancipatory reflections gets you not to take anything for granted. It, it requires you engaging in systematic exploration to be able to take progressive decision. And as I go on to talking about one of the other roles of the nurse, you will see the essence of engaging in emancipatory reflections. Now I'm going to, I'm going to talk a little more on uh, being an expert. There are two dimensions to being an expert, either as a professional or professional providing care, providing services, or as a professional that deals with concept conceptualizing, contextualizing programs and services. You will be expected as a nurse when you get to a community to be able to, to do some basic assessment to come up with ideas about what kind of programs will be needed, what kind of services will be needed. And I imagine in some of your postings, especially talking about your postings while you were doing public community health nursing, you will have engaged in community assessment, you will have been part of uh, uh, doing community diagnosis, you will have worked with communities to come up with solutions like how do they get uh, water, safe water? How do they get the school children to have access to good food? So these are some of the areas that you have to work as a, as a when you're talking about the programmatic and service conceptualization and implementation dimension of your role. So it is not just about talking about you as a nurse in the hospital, but as a total nurse. And as a BNSC graduate, you have been prepared to be able to work across a lifespan, giving primary care, functioning at the secondary level, functioning at the tertiary level as need be. Now, let me take you to the second role of the nurse which is also very central to the caring role of the nurse. And this role has to do with your role as instructor, facilitator, educator, and counselor. You will observe that I have not, I have not used the word teacher. More often than not, uh, people assume that teaching is about just giving instruction and giving direction. But now we are looking critically at about the appropriate words that should communicate the behavior that we expect. We expect you to be instructor, facilitator, educator, and counselor, all in one. As an, uh, uh, for, for instructor, we expect you will give appropriate learning. And essentially, if there is any program that has prepared you, to be able to be instructor, facilitator, educator, and counselor, it is the Bachelor of Nursing Science degree. Your curriculum had exposed you to curriculum development, teaching and learning methodology, and uh, adult learning principles. So all these you have for you to be able to use appropriate and diverse teaching learning techniques and strategies, especially looking at which are the ones that are, 
that have been adjudged uh, to contribute to better success. So as a nurse instructor, facilitator, educator, and counselor, we expect you to be able to build capacities for the various levels, for the performances and for action agenda, especially talking about health literacy, looking at the individual, looking at the family, looking at community, looking at institutions where you're supposed to be able to function and also working with government to come up with appropriate uh, policies and guidelines. As uh, a nurse advocate, Florence Nightingale uh, demonstrated what advocacy is all about. And Florence Nightingale practice actually gives information about what should be the advocacy role of the nurse from the perspective of being there, from the perspective of speaking up, from the perspective of being able to convince other people, and from the perspective of standing to defend the right of your client. As a professional nurse, you are expected to demonstrate professional competence, you are expected to demonstrate objectivity, you are expected to demonstrate flexibility, you are expected to demonstrate empathy, you are expected to demonstrate self-motivation, you are expected to demonstrate accountability, and you are expected to demonstrate a sense of responsibility in your advocacy role. And advocacy also implies that we as nurses must stand up for high quality care. We must ensure safe and clean environment we must promote actions that will ensure that basic human rights of all our clients, all service providers are respected. And I'm going to talk about the last role that uh, I've, I've, I've picked. And that's the fact that as a nurse, you are expected to be a transformational leader. Uh, a transformational leader drives change. And consistently work with others to sustain health systems that ensures quality assurance, quality improvement, as to limit the burden and impact of COVID-19. The professional nurse is expected to encourage, to inspire, to motivate others, to motivate self, and to collaborate with other health professionals and others to come up with innovative and creative change that must help growth and shape the future. We need, a, we need to look at what are the changes that will get us better prepared in case we have another breakout of any form of disease, whether it is local, it is national, or it becomes a pandemic again. The graduate nurse is expected to seek knowledge consistently and as part of being a transformational uh, leader, you also need to seek and be open to mentorship so that you can learn from great leaders for you to be able to see how things get done. And essentially, a transformational leader gets prepared to, for, for rapid response in case of uh, a similar uh, emergence of situation like COVID-19. In conclusion, Emergency, the emergence of coronavirus uh, has become a challenging global crisis, not only for health systems, but in, for all socio-economic dimensions of life. COVID-19 is associated with high body. The magnitude and the impact of COVID-19 COVID are still evolving. The virus infects individuals and anyone can contract the virus. But, the, the, but this implies that all of us are affected. And because all of us are affected, we all must take responsibilities for prevention of transmission and spread. We must take care of people that are infected to recovery or to dignifying death. We must manage the emotional drainage associated with loss of associates, friends, family members. 
and we have seen healthcare pro pro providers, especially nurses, in frontline care provision that are breaking down. This implies that nurses must be prepared not only to boost their own mental health status through uh, activities that boost support, by looking at programs and services also that will provide support, it also implies that nurses must play important roles in conceptualizing programs and services, not only to meet health literacy, but also to support caring needs of family members who are affected by COVID-19 uh, across the lifespan. And like I said, this must be done in the context of uh, practices at the primary, at the secondary, and the ter tertiary levels of care. Thank you so much. On behalf of the university and the vice chancellor in particular, I would like to thank uh, Professor Omolola Erioye for this excellent presentation. May God bless you and your family. At this juncture, we will now like to call out the, the inductees, the, those who are representing the class, to please stand up. Those who are representing the class, please stand up. Now is uh, we are now entering the. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, we have for the six inductees today, but because of what we all know about the pandemic, uh, we cannot bring all of them here at all. We are just we have few of them to represent the class, and this is the time for me to call on the Secretary Register of the Nursing Council of Nigeria. We are entering the, the, the meat of the program to induct the registered nurses. And we are reaching out to those who are not here. Fear these people that are here now, those who are here. And we know God is with them. So, um, So we thank God for you. You have struggled very hard. And at this moment that you are standing, we would like uh, 
to introduce our uh, special person for the inductee, uh, the Registrar of Nursing Council, uh, uh, Alaji Farouk Abubakar, has a, a neighbor PA who is going to do the induction this morning. She is uh, Mrs. Stella Godwill. And at, at this juncture, I would like to call on um, Mrs. Stella God's will uh, to administer the the oath. She has joined the meeting since 10 o'clock, so I, I, I'm sure she's around. We are getting in touch with her. We'll soon move forward. While we are waiting for her, I would like again to thank the Nursing and Medical Council of Nigeria for making this happen. And also to thank the university because uh, it's very stressful to plan this program. You know, they have to have a special committee of the university headed by Professor Bengai Dogu. They did a very, very nice job. And we only coordinated it, Mrs. Woma the chairman of the induction committee of the department uh, you know, was liaising between them and telling us what they need because uh, Professor Okoro put this up, this very fine group, and they did a nice job. Professor Hachiko Okoro is the uh, senior vice president and provost of the College of Medicine, of, of College of Health and Medical Sciences of Babcock University. So we thank you, sir, for this uh, uh, opportunity you gave the student or the graduates to be able to get inducted. This ceremony is important because these people that you are seeing standing, they finished their program since uh, November last year. Some of them in, uh, in May. Without this, they will not be able to go for uh, internship, which is now required. Prior to this time, we are not required as nurses to go for internship. But a few years back, the nursing council changed their mind and think that if they will go for internship, their clinical skills will be better, you know, enhanced rather than just rely on what they, you know, learn in the school when they are taking the normal didactic courses with uh, concentrated clinical uh, uh, exposures. So, but if they go for a whole year and expose themselves to more thorough supervision, then they will perfect it. So it is not strange that we are not copying the doctor just for the copying sake, but that is the best practice to be on the best side 24 by 7, and then acquire skills and uh, knowledge that you can transfer at both tertiary, secondary, and primary level. So, uh, please be patient. We are almost there.
Are, are we there? Well, that is the, sometimes the price of technology. Even in advanced countries, there will be some itches. So we should not worry too much. I think we are doing fine. This is the first experience. And better, the second one will be better than this. Um, and we're looking forward to the university at large it's a celebration. So, so be patient with us. Their success at 
his professional examination and also for being able to complete the university nursing program. It's not an easy step. I also want to congratulate the lecturers who have grown these students in character and in learning that have been nurtured to attain the height of which we are celebrating today. I say congratulations to you, lecturers. I want to congratulate the university management that has provided the enabling environment favorable for these students to learn and to be able to graduate from the Department of Nursing, Babcock University. I want to, I will not forget to congratulate the parents and their guardians that have toyed to see them through morally and financially to this end. Congratulations to all the parents present. As we proceed ahead, it's an important event we are here to do today. Great masses. Are you there? Great masses. Great masses. Great masses. Great masses. Are you there? Unmute yourself. Unmute yourself now. Unmute yourself. Hello? Yes, yes, yes you're okay, ma'am. through this induction and through the oath-taking ceremony and to remind you of your fundamental responsibilities as nurses. The induction will be performed by myself on behalf of the registrar. I had earlier introduced myself as Mrs. Gossi and as the SAC the registrar, not a Mrs. Fast of Nigeria. Every process of this uh, induction, I will want you to take it very serious. It's not just a routine, uh, a routine activity. We, we need to take the event very, very serious. In administering the oath, and after this induction, you will now be registered with the nursing council. Your name will be entered into the register of nurse and military council, and you will be addressed as a nurse officially addressed as a registered nurse. And by that qualification, you have the authority to practice nursing anywhere in the world. A lot has been said. I've listened to the speech of the head of department and the in the, the management of the university. And our inductee lecturer, she has said a lot, which I know you have also listened to. We are in the 21st uh, century. We need to abide with change. A lot of things have changed. Okay, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. You can hear. Okay. Okay. So I said a lot have changed. And that graduate nurses, graduating from the Department of Nursing, you are a polyvalent nurse. 
levels of healthcare system in Nigeria. Just like our mama, the professor, has said, he has been equipped with the knowledge that we never need to take the rightful place in the profession of nursing. That we never need to contribute to the advancement of nursing profession. That we never need to drive at all times with competency to add value to quality of care you render to the patients and customers of healthcare. Great nurses, we are in the 21st century. In this 21st century, nothing is designed that you take a holistic care of patients, of clients, and health consumers. It is no longer the time. I am having headache, you want to treat fever. I am having diarrhea, I want to treat just stop the diarrhea. In the 21st century nursing, we look at the patient as a holistic being. What is the cause of the diarrhea? How did this come to the patient? Is it true poor hygiene? Is it true uh, malnutrition? Is it true infection? So all of this is what you have to consider. It is not enough to stop the diarrhea and then you leave the patient there. Because the cause of the infection may resurface. If you didn't treat the root of the infection, the root cause of the infection. So that's what we are saying in this 21st century, nothing is designed to focus on patient health care holistically. You have been equipped with the knowledge and understanding to be able to make sound nursing diagnosis, to be able to design appropriate nursing care plan, to be able to implement and evaluate comprehensively at the end of each treatment. You will know as a nurse, you have four fundamental responsibilities. Our guest lecturer has said it. You have the responsibility to promote health. You have the responsibility to prevent illness. You have the responsibility to restore health.
magical words, and I believe by your the virtue of your training, you are adequately equipped to fit in in any of the areas you find yourself. The public impression of Francis, it is your attitude that will change it. The way you approach your clients, the way you talk to them, your ability to communicate effectively, all matters in the care of the patient. As you move out there, we want you to be good ambassadors of nursing. The good ambassadors represent the council very well, represent the nursing profession very well. While we are listening to the induction lecturer, taking an action or when you have done something, do not always look at the reward. Do not always look at, you know, quantify your service with the pay you are receiving. There is nobody that can pay you better than God. Think of what you can put in to get the patient out of the debilitating state. I think when you see that patient in a healthy situation and condition, you will be happy that God has used you to achieve something. And when you go home, you will be happy, God, am I the one that was able to do this kind of thing? Because God said that it's not all works without reward. There are rewards in nursing profession. There are two others to be rewarded. The real nurses are the ones to be rewarded. There are rewards are waiting for them. You do good, you get your good rewards. You do bad, you also get your reward. So what am I trying to say? We need to show passion. And we need to be determined in the work we do. Great nurses, great nurses, great nurses, great nurses, great nurses, great nurses, The patient you take care of today may not know you, may not know your name, but they will never forget the care. They will never forget how you treated them. They will never forget how you made them feel well. So great mercies. especially at this time of COVID-19 pandemic. I want to thank the induction lecturer for the timely lecture that was based on COVID-19 and all its uh, association of challenges and what you as a nurse can do. Please don't forget all the precautionary measures you need to take to protect yourself and to protect the patients you are caring for. The personal protective equipment, you must not forget to use them while you are caring for the patient. A lot of nurses have gotten infected. It is not to our own interest that any of us should be infected. Please 
things we need to take caution as we go to the field. Practice well with your fellow colleagues. Take directives from your fellow colleagues that knows more than you. Work well with other multidisciplinary team members that you may meet in your areas of practice. Great mercy. Congratulations once again. And thank you for listening. Now we are going to the induction proper. Can we be all standing?
restoration and justice to me.
then you will be given your original and official license of practice. I wish you well. Uh, I wish you some time. We thank the Registrar, Secretary General, the representative of his, uh, of his for this wonderful uh, rich, uh, virtual induction. Now it's time for me to charge the inductees. And Mr. Fesha Hello, sir. It is my pleasure at this uh, juncture to offer some words of charges to my professional colleagues. We thank God for bringing you here so far. Those of you are here and those of you are listening from home. As you go, I charge you to be compassionate. As you go, I try to be temperate at all times, to be hardworking, to be honest, godly in dealing with your clients and others, to be considerate, to be Christ-like, to be patient, and to have a servant leader attitude. Be assertive, intelligently, but not with argument. A team player in the healthcare that we have had this morning, we play within a multidisciplinary healthcare system. Everybody has his or her own role, not to be agreed. Willing to advance nursing knowledge through higher education and research, I charge you to work as much as possible, to love your clients as yourself. I also charge you to be a willing partner in the future development of, of Bacall University School of Nursing. I also charge you to go to the world and be a light set on a mountain. I charge you that you should go and be an angel of light, an angel of healing, in your compassion. Go. I say go. Go. And the Lord will be with you. Yeah. Mr. Vastan Salazar. We are gradually, please, can you see that? We are gradually coming to the end of the program, but this is the time for us to recognize excellence, academic excellence. Every year, the School of Nursing gives award to the best three graduating students and this year we also have best graduating students because of their not being here, um, they'll be represented. We will call their names, they'll be highlighted, so as the audience we know whom we are calling, and then we will call somebody here present to collect the award on behalf of the awardees. And so, uh, can we bring the awards close by? Eh? We'll start with the third person. 
The third person is uh, Lawal. Kujayat Olu Adami Lola. To collect the award for her, we have Omolaye Fumi Fulu Fuluwa. At the camera is there. Okay. There is no shaking of hand now. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you. Yes, sir. Incidentally, the second best student, graduating student, is here, Ogun Lucy Benga Elijah. Best graduate student is Ajebu Chikchimuche Grace. I will call on Tony Tayo to please come forward and collect the award for her. Before I leave, we have to cut the cake, the induction cake. And uh, you know, we have a new normal now, so we don't want any crowding. We have to maintain social distancing. And as a result, I want to call on Adetona, Adeton, to please come and cut the cake on behalf of the inductees and the officers of the university. Please, can you come? I will conduct the cutting, and we are going to spell NOS. Since at the end of the spelling, you will cut the cake. Can you put your hand on the knife? Now, all of us will spell NOS now, and at the end of the spelling, she will cut the cake. Can we start? And yeah. you, you are, are S, S E. e. <laughs> Congratulations, eh? Thank you very much.
Action. Congratulations to our nurses. I'm grateful to God for the opportunity to address you as you step out of Babcock University into your profession here in Nigeria and abroad. Some of you are freshly minted as you just be graduating from the university. Others have worked before coming to Babcock to get to educated for greater service. In whichever category you belong, I thank the Lord that you chose Babcock University for your education. I pray that as you passed through the Seventh-day Adventist institution with its Christian faith and values, that you also allowed Babcock University to pass through you and that you will ever exemplify Babcock University core values in all you do. COVID-19 forced you out of campus without an opportunity to speak to you face to face. But thank God there is always a way out. This online induction, the first in this university, will ever remain for you. before you step out into your world of work, I would like to remind you that by choosing to become nurses, you have chosen one of the most important professions in the world. Not for money, but for service. And for ministry. Yes, for ministry. And by choosing to study nursing at Babcock University, you have chosen to model Jesus Christ, the greatest nurse that ever lived in your nursing career. Therefore, you must work as Christ worked while he was on earth and how he still works for us today. The patients you will attend to are humans like you, created in God's image. They are not just numbers and cases. You must see them with the eye of Jesus and treat them the way Jesus would treat them. You will not get so used to suffering that you will become uncaring or unconcerned about them. Rather, you will handle them with utmost care. Jesus loved us so much that he died to set us free from sin and eternal death. Your love for your patients should cause you to go beyond the call of duty, to relieve them, not just physically, but give them all-round care as Jesus' care does for us, such that even if they have to die, they will die, not so much in pain due to neglect, but in peace because someone loved and cared for them. You must remember that whatever you do for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, Jesus says, you do it for him. Matthew 25, 40, reading from the NIV. May the compassion of Jesus fill your heart for your patience, that it will stir your heart with empathy and kindness so that your touch, your look, and your words will all become sources of healing for them. May those you care for seek you out, not just for their medication, but because of the selfless service and Christian aura around you. May your heart be broken for your patience that you will always pray for them and with them. May you become the Jesus that your patients see in the hospital and by their bedside and May the exemplary manner in which you handle everything cause people to question where you trained and give glory to God for Babcock University. Once again, congratulations, and may the Lord's name be praised as you serve him through serving his children. Bye-bye.
Good afternoon, everyone. I'm the Registrar Nursing Amid Rufrikantu, the Vice Chancellor, the SVP, the Dean, the HODs, and all my lecturers present here. All protocols duly observed. My name is Tayolo Atonia Didura, and I'll be representing all the inductees present here and present via Zoom. I um, want to first start by appreciating God for seeing us through our journey here. Um, the inductees will agree with me that it's not been an easy journey, and want to say a very big thank you to God for seeing us through, for providing for us, for providing for our parents, for everything he has done for us so far. We're really grateful to God. Next, I would like to appreciate the dean, the HODs, and all our lecturers present here. Thank you for grooming us to be the nurse that we are today. Thank you for your correction, thank you for your reproach, and thank you for your love. I pray that God will bless you abundantly. Next, we want to thank our parents. We thank you so much. We know how you've sacrificed for us to be here today. We know how you've cut down on all your expenses and everything. We cannot thank you enough, but please appreciate our, please um, take our, appreciate, our appreciation. Next, I would like to thank um, the Registrar Nurse in Amidufri Council. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, and a very big thank you to you and your team. Next, I would love to appreciate our classmates who are not here presently. It would have been a great joy for every one of us, including our classmates that didn't make the exam, to have been here. But due to some reasons and some factors, they are not here. I want to thank you very much for sticking with us because it's not easy for your classmates to be moving on and you are being stuck somewhere. I want to say a very big thank you to every one of you. I'd also like to congratulate all my inductees here today and say a very big congratulations. I pray that God will continue to bless every one of us here in Jesus' name. Deputy Department, Professor Ezekiel Ajao, our HODs, our lecturers, our parents, and finally, my fellow classmates. I'm pleased to have the opportunity to address you all here today. We would have gathered together to celebrate our success, but due to the pandemic, a lot of activities have been suspended. But nevertheless, we still have to celebrate our achievements so far. This is a period of big change for us all. The period that will bring about exciting the Deputy opportunities Vice and Chancellor. The Registrar, Nursing and Midwifery Council of Nigeria, Al Haji, Farouk, Omar, Abubakar. The speaker for this uh, virtual induction, Professor Omolola Irinoye. The dean, the HODs, all the faculties, the professors here present, and those viewing via the Zoom. The students who are viewing via the Zoom, our beloved inductees, the men, of the, the men and women of the press, everyone here present and those watching via the Zoom. Thank you for all being here. All due protocols duly observed. On behalf of the Dean School of Nursing, Professor Ezekiel Ajao, the HODs, the faculties, the students, the inductees, and our staff. I want to say glory be to God for enabling us to reach here, and especially for granting that this induction should be virtual and the first of its kind in the school, in the university. I want to thank the vice chancellor for his support of the School of Nursing. I want to thank him especially for trusting us so much that he sent his beloved daughter to be trained by us. And you can see that she was inducted today. I want to thank the SVP for his consistent support of the School of Nursing, always granting our unending and, de and challenging demands. God bless you. Thank you to... The Nursing Council Registrar, thank you to our speaker, thank you to all the HODs and the Dean School of Nursing for your leadership and for providing the enabling environment for these young nurses to be trained so that they can achieve their goal of becoming nurses. Thank you all the parents and sponsors 
of our inductees. Without your effort, without your sacrifice, they will not make it. My prayer is that the Almighty God will bless you and replenish you and keep you alive and healthy so that you can enjoy the fruit of your labor. I want to thank especially the inductees. Without you, we won't be celebrating today. I want to praise God for you and I want to congratulate you for arriving here, becoming a registered nurse. Great nurses. Great nurses. Greatest of the greatest nurses. You have arrived here, but this is not the end of the road. You have to move on. Go out there and give the quality care that you have learned from School of Nursing, Babcock University. And as you go, my prayer is that you will go out there and God's presence will always be with you so that you will give the best care possible to your patients. And as we have been reminded today by the speaker, our role in enabling us and our patients to survive the COVID-19 pandemic. I want to thank everyone that has contributed to the training of these young nurses. I want to thank especially the technical team the men and women of the press, the media in Babcock University, the tech uh, and everyone, the committees that have put this together, and the nursing induction committee. Thank you, everyone, for all your help. I pray that the Lord will always be with you and safeguard you, even in this time of COVID. As you go for those traveling, may he grant you his journey mercies. Bless you all and stay safe. It has been a wonderful time. Let's rise as we pray. Let's bow our heads as we pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you immensely for this wonderful day. Thank you for the students that went through Babcock University. Throughout the five years of their studies here, you took care of them. You provided for their parents. Their health, there was no problem because you stood by them. We thank you for Babcock University. We thank you for all the teachers and everyone listening out there. Father, today we give you all the glory. That as they go out, Father, you will go with them. That you will establish them. That faithfully you will guide them, apply their foot on the solid rock. Father, we pray that their parents will not weep over any one of them. That they will attain greater success. That in your sight they will find favor. In the sight of their fellow men, they will find favor. And wherever they go, your name will be exalted. And as we go away from here, please, Father, go with us. In this period of difficulties, we ask that you will help every one of us, that none of us will fall victim. None of us will be taken and snatched by the cold hands of death. Thank you, Father, for blessing us. Have your way as we go from here. In Jesus Christ's name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. God bless you. My name is Olajide Bumi Abisola. My experience as a nursing student in Babcock University wasn't a rosy one. It was a bumpy ride. It was a journey full of hard work, strides, and grace. It was really a journey of grace. And I want to thank God for making His grace sufficient for me. Thanks to my family for their support and consistency. I believe with what I've learned throughout my stay in the university, I'm equipped to become a better person in the society and I'm equipped to go through the next phase of life thanks to the lecturers and staff of the School of Nursing Babcock University. 
God bless the Department of Nursing Science, God bless Parkbrook University. Hello everyone, my name is Wodina Antonia, one of the newly inducted nurses of Babcock University School of Nursing, graduating class 2020. <laughs> my five years in Babcock wasn't easy, it was it was demanding, it was tasking, it had to do with God, hard work, time management, because it wasn't easy shuffling between seven six classes, church assignments, presentations, projects, examinations, like it was just God and then some friends and roommates and my parents who actually motivated me and helped me through it. Okay, Babcock actually um, taught me patience, humility, like if you don't want SOP struggle, you have to be humble. That was it. It taught me humility, it taught me patience, it taught me how to accommodate and deal with different people. Changing roommates every semester. I think I, I stayed with more than 30 to 35 people as in different roommates every semester. It wasn't easy. Then um, church, it got me closer to God. Like going to church every day, almost every day of the week. At first it was like a big deal to me. but before the five years ended i got closer to god and i saw the impact in my life and then i really want to appreciate god my parents and babcock university for molding me and bringing me to this level it wasn't easy but it was worth it it's Osho titilayo abigail and my experience in nursing is not something that i can say in two minutes because it was it was difficult for me at the point because I had to overcome new challenges. I had to face new challenges. I had to do things that I had not done before. I had to put in more efforts. I had to reach my breaking point and start all over again. But after everything, I just want to say thank God because here I am now. I'm standing. Hi. My name is Abuan Fe Use and I'm here to talk about my experience as a nursing student in Babcock University. Um, the experience was not easy, it was not easy at all, but I'm very grateful to God for seeing me through. I'm grateful for my family and my friends and everyone who has contributed one way or another to my journey. And I'm very grateful to my lecturers for their support and their love. And I'm very glad that this journey has come to an end. Thank you guys so much for for everything. I love you. Hello everyone. My name is Ubudume Antonia, one of the newly inducted nurses of Babcock University School of Nursing, graduating class 2020. <laughs> okay, um my stay my five years in Babcock wasn't so easy. It was tasking, it was demanding, it had to do with God and hard work and time management. Oh, it wasn't easy shuffling between seven to six classes, then church assignment. My name is Elder Dugulong Blessing. Wow, like coming to the reality that I'm actually inducting today, it's, it's a dream come true for me. I really want to thank God for this opportunity. I really want to thank God for his love, his kindness, his faithfulness. It has it has really been God all through these years, from 100 level, 200 level, 300 level, 400 level, and 500 level. If not for God. Good day, everyone. My name is Idris Ulua Gemisimbiat. So today I'm going to be sharing my experience as a nursing student in Babcock University. But before I begin, I would like to appreciate God and give him the glory for giving me this grace and opportunity to be in Babcock University. Left alone to me, I never thought I was going to be in Babcock University, not even talking of a private university at like that. But God gave me the privilege, gave me the purpose to be in Babcock University and I want to appreciate him and give him the glory for that. Also, my experience or my journey in, as a nursing student in Babcock University officially began in 200 level let me put it that way right with my clinical experience so i'm going to be dividing my experience as a nursing student at Bangkok university i'm going to be dividing it into two parts first hey, had... my name is ikedi chiazoka francis a nursing student of Bangkok university my journey in nursing was definitely 
not an easy one or a smooth one but i can boldly say that it was worth it through my experience in nursing i was able to gain a lot of things which was not just academically but also physically and socially i also gained a lot of skills some of which includes critical thinking skills problem solving skills and communication skills from my experience in nursing i also realized that there is really nothing you can't do as far as you put your mind to it because the moment you think you want to give up and you can't go on anymore you just realize that you are way stronger than how you thought you were hello good day my name is Adjie Butchua Grace, and I am here to talk about my experience as a nursing student for five years in Babcock University truly it was exciting it was interesting it was also challenging because there were so many things to learn and it looks like you can never know it all but I had to learn problem solving skills I had to learn creative thinking skills and everything I needed to stand as a nurse in the society and to be honest it's been wonderful it was a wonderful experience. Hey everyone I'm Peter in Favor, a graduate of nursing from Babcock University and I briefly want to share my experience with you as a nurse student in Babcock University. So first as a nursing student our curriculum was divided into two the classroom experience and the clinical experience. As for the classroom experience we were being taught the theoretical aspects of our work for that semester in class after which we went for the clinical block we we went to the hospital to practicalize what we were taught in class. So for the classroom experience, we have very attentive lecturers who are always trying their best to come up with new ways for us to learn. They understand that as individuals, we have different methods by which we learn and as so they employ different methods so that everybody is able to follow up what is being taught in class. Another thing I'm very grateful for is the fact that while I was in Babcock, most of our assignments were done as a group. We're always working as groups because we're being told that as a healthcare professional, you do not work alone. In patient care, you work as a team. As a nurse, I work with the patient, with the doctor, the social worker, the pharmacist, and other healthcare professionals. And, I, and for my name is Tayo Iwatoni Adidora, a graduate student of Babcock University School of Nursing Sciences. I really want to appreciate God for seeing me through my journey of five years here. I also want to appreciate my parents for being very supportive and for sponsoring me through my stay here in Babcock University. May God bless you all. I really want to say that nursing is quite tough and very demanding from 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. classes almost every day coupled with clinical rotations is tiring and very stressful but i want to thank god for seeing me through i want to appreciate the following people for contributing towards my success i want to appreciate the dean professor ajao professor i know dr jawale dr farid simi mr mai tommy mr olaji de mr adebi baba popo Mrs. Leslie, my supervisor, Dr. Winnie, I want to say a very big thank you to every one of you. I pray that God bless you abundantly and God will reward your labor of love over us. I also want to thank Mrs. Ojo. I want to thank all my lecturers. I cannot mention every one of you, but I want to know I want you to know that you are deeply appreciated. I also want to congratulate my fellow inductees. This is a thing of joy. Congratulations to every one of you. I also want to say that I pray that God will bless Babcock University and God will bless Babcock University School of Nursing Sciences. Thank you.